All right, class. Here's another uh, great way to make a box plot. Uh, I found this on a blog online. I will uh, cite where I found the blog in the comments. So what we're going to do is create uh, a box plot using sort of a combination of line charts and scatter plots. Uh, and it's going to end up looking like this. So it looks really great, I think. Uh, in fact, I've uh, added my own sort of little variation outside of the uh, what the blog suggested by adding uh, confidence intervals around the mean, um, which is also nice. So remember, a regular box plot, typically uh, we have the line right here in the middle, which is the median, and then the first quartile. Sorry, the first quartile is down here. The first quartile and the third quartile. And the median is also known as the second quartile sometimes, but there's the 50th percentile, 25th percentile is the first quartile, and the 75th percentile. That means 50% of the data is in between here uh, inside the box. Uh, and then on this type of box plot, we just have the min, the whiskers go out to the min and the max, which uh, I have another video where it says sometimes that's not always the case, depending on who's making the box plot. But this one, we're just going to go ahead and do that. The nice part, uh, nice thing about uh, displaying distributions of data in box plots is that I can compare um, several different distributions all at once. So here we have three different sample A, B, and C. And I want to see what the distribution of the three of them look like right next to each other. So histograms, this is harder to do with. Uh, and say, what if I had like you know, maybe 12 months worth of, uh, of data and I wanted to break it up into every month? Then I could easily do this for a box plot, whereas if I did that with a sort of a histogram, it'd get really clumsy and, and hard to do. All right, so let's do this. All right, so in the, this other tab. All right, so the easy, this is pretty easy. So f you know, you'd have to go and kind of calculate some of this data. Quartile, min, median, max, uh, mean, max, third quartile. There's functions in Excel that will allow you to do all this stuff. Um, so we're not going to go over that. But let's just highlight everything uh, above the standard deviation. So we're just going to highlight the first quartile, the min, median, mean, max, and third quartile. And uh, all the other, uh, the three samples. Go to insert. And we're going to first make a line chart. We're going to use this one with markers. We want little dots to show up on it. Click on OK. So the first thing is Excel gives us uh, something that looks like this, where we have uh, the first me me min, median, mean, max along this axis. But rem remember, what we really want is the sample A, B, C uh, along that axis, right? Along the X axis. So that's pretty easy to do if we just go up here to the switch row column. Click that once, and then it just switches the data around. So we have sample A, B, and C. All right. So, so far, we're not really looking too much like a box plot, but we can actually see that we have the outline of a box plot, right? So we have up here, this line is the max. Down here is the min, all right? So we're going to just have to get a line to draw from there to there. Here, the green orange one is the third quartile. This blue one is the first quartile. So we just need to draw a box around those ones. And then we have the mean and the median down here in the middle. So it's the outline, like the skeleton is there, right? So a crazy thing, there's this uh, graph called the um, candlestick chart, which is used a, a lot of, in sort of investment type of uh, uh, type of reporting uh, that just magically kind of works uh, to create these boxes. So how do we do this? So first we just sort of click in the uh, on the box somewhere, uh, in the chart somewhere, go to layout, and then click on this up down bars, and uh, right now it's it's on none. Click on up down bars. There it is. So we get our boxes. And it just, um, again, sort of just knows that you want the ones in the middle. Great. Final thing, we want to click on this lines guy here. And we want to click on the high, low lines. And what this will do is it will go up to the max and the min. Perfect. So now we're starting to look kind of like a box plot. Uh, all we got to do then now is uh, kind of get rid of these lines. We don't need those. So one at a time, we have to click these and say format data series. Uh, and say line color, no line. And then while we're at it, we can go to uh, marker options and click on none. That will get rid of the little markers. All right, then if we click on this guy, we do the same thing. So in 2010, we don't have to close and redo this, right? It's just if I click on a different thing, it just uh, keeps my little box going. Um, so that's sort of a shortcut. So marker options, none. Uh, line color, no line. That one's gone. All right, let's click on this blue one. This is the first quartile. Same thing. Marker options, none. Uh, line color, no line. Let's go up to the third quartile. Third quartile. Marker options, none. And line color, no line. All right. Let's do this median. 
markers. Same thing, marker options. Uh, let's leave the marker there for now uh, and then click on the line color, no line. Click on close. So we'll see what happens. Let's let's do the that was the mean. Huh? Let's do the let's do the median again. Sorry. Right click, format data series. Uh, line color, no line. Well, let's keep the marker there. All right, so we got this little marker for the median. Now remember what we're after. I'm gonna go back to my other sheet. Is this a line for the median? That's the typical thing. We want a line straight through the median. So we can actually do that with what's called uh, these error bars. Over here is called error bars. The problem with uh, error bars under line charts is that I can only have error bars that go uh, up and down. If this were a scatter plot, I can have uh, error bars that go either way, up and down or left and right. So if I click on this, you can see, yeah, I can have error bars that go up and down, and that's all. So the crazy thing about this is that I can actually just turn just the uh, mean or the median, I'm going to end up doing it with both, into uh, a sample, or er, sorry, into a scatter diagram. Right, so remember right now, this was a line chart. This is how we started out with a line chart. So we want to make sure that we just select the median. So let me show you how to do that. You can either just click on the median outside and click. So look up here, it says series median. This is the only thing that we're dealing with, series median. If I click the drop down box, I can click any of these, right? But I just want to click on the median. And then I'm going to change the chart type under chart tools design, change chart type. It's just going to change it for the median. And I'm going to kind of scroll down here, find XY scatter. That's the one I want, XY scatter diagram. Click on OK. Now immediately it sort of makes a new set of axes. Don't worry, we're going to get it back to the original axis and it's going to look normal. It sort of jumped up here. That's OK. But now what I want to show you is if I click on the median and then go to format, whoops, layout I mean, click on the error bars. Now you can see that my error bars will go in both directions, which is cool. All right, so we'll just let's just click on the error bars with standard error for now and say, okay, that's great. So you can see now we, we got some lines that are going across. That's what we want. We have some that are going up and down too. So the first thing, I want to get rid of the ones going up and down. So I'll click on there, or I can go over here <laughs> and see now I have median X error bars and median Y error bars. I want to get rid of the median Y error bars. In fact, I can just click that and hit delete. It'll go away. I don't want that. Now click on that, uh, the median X error bars. And I can well, I can do the same thing. I right click, format error bars, and I want a fixed value. And it turns out the fixed value is going to be 0 0.2. 0 0.2 will always be the exact width of that box. That's just showed up in this blog that I was reading. Read. Uh, and let's click on no cap. We don't need a cap there. And then click on close. All right, we're almost done. So now let's click on uh, click on the median, sort of the triangles again. Right click. Format data series. Two things. We need to say plot the series on the primary axis. Right now it's on the secondary axis. Primary axis. Now it just puts it all together. Oh, that's what we want. It's looking pretty. And then let's get rid of the marker while we're at it. So let's just say none. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So now we have just our regular uh, box plot. And we have happen to have the mean here as well. So normally box plots don't always show a mean. But I've seen this more and more often where a mean and then even a, a a confidence interval around that mean. So let's do that next. So this is the same process that we just did with the uh, with the median. We have to turn this into a uh, into a scatter plot first. So now up here, click on series mean, design, change. Make sure it's just that one. So you can see it's only that one selected. Change chart type. Scroll down a little bit. X Y. Okay. Again, it sort of does the weird jumping stuff. That's all right. Click on it again. Layout, error bars. Let's just just make some error bars for now, so we have something to sort of select. Now, in this case, we're going to delete the uh, horizontal, the uh, x error bars, horizontal ones. We don't want those ones, but we're going to do like a confidence interval around this mean. So let's just click select on the uh, x error bars, and then just hit delete. So those ones going back and forth are gone. And let's click on the y ones, and then say format. Oh, actually, it's probably easier. Just right click, format error bars. All right, now we're gonna use this custom guy down here. I'll show you this guy, custom, and you can specify, and then click on specify values. Now this says, okay, what do you want for a uh, positive error value, and what do you want for a negative error value? Well, what that's called in the confidence interval is just called the margin of error, and it's the same number uh, on both sides of the mean, but it could be different for different samples, right? In fact, you can look at the little formula in here. I use the confidence.t function to find out the margin of error which is really just some t value times the standard error, which is the standard deviation by, uh, divided by the square root of n. 
right? So I have to have the standard deviation and n, and then this turns out this is a 95% confidence interval. So I have an alpha of 0 0.05, which corresponds to a 95% confidence interval. I got several other videos on that if you want to learn a little bit more about margin of error. But we'll, we're going to have the margin of error as the uh, positive error value and the margin of error as the negative error, uh, error value. Go ahead and enter. For some reason on mine, it doesn't show up in there, but it works. I don't know why, but it's, you see how there's nothing there? But if I click on OK, it seems to be working. All right, so all that's left now is to sort of click on the, uh, the little uh, series itself, mean. I say, OK, we want that on the primary axis. And there it shows up. Let's change the marker to, I don't like the little X. Click on marker options. And let's do let's do like this little diamond. I like that. I think it's a little big, so I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit. Click on close, and then I'm gonna get rid of this uh, legend. Just click on the legend to get rid of it. Make it a little bigger so it's not so squished. And that's it. So uh, one more thing we could do is we could click on the box itself, and then we can make it pretty. So we can choose all these. Um, let's use this purple one because it sort of matches my purple mean. So this is pretty cool. So we can easily make, uh, in this, we can see the min, we can see the first quartile, the median, and then we also have the mean and the confidence interval around the mean uh, that's based on our sample size and our standard deviation. Uh, we have the third quartile and the max. So this gives us a ton of information um, across three different samples. There's no reason why I couldn't make this for 12 uh, different samples or, or whatever it is, right? So pretty cool. So hopefully this helps out. All right, thanks.